Hey everyone and welcome to my shoe tutorial. Now this time it's an updated version of the one I did before. We're doing quite a few things here. This time we're actually doing a sneaker. So we're doing quite a few panels. We're doing a little bit of hard surface modeling. We'll be doing a little bit of alphas as well, getting some uh, different type of brushes in there as well. So yeah, quite a bit of stuff, quite a bit of things to cover. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. All right, and if you guys already know how to use ZBrush, you're kind of familiar with it. You don't have to watch this part, but if you are kind of a beginner, I will recommend using or watching this part. All right, so as I was going through this tutorial, I did realize I was going through some things pretty quickly. Um, so I just want to quickly slow things down here and just show you some things. So a lot of the things that I'm going to use, I'm just going to bring it up here. So if you press W, it'll bring up your gizmo. If you go to the settings tab or the customize tab, you can click on that. And I'm going to use quite a few of these. Well, not a few, just deformer. And I'll use one or two. So like the extender and the deformer. So I'm mainly going to be using the deformer. So you just click on the deformer, you'll get a bunch of these control points. You can move these arrows to add or decrack control points from any side. And then you can also go to control click and drag to minus these control points over here so you can just move these points like this so it's kind of a deformer as the name suggests okay you can create these points here or highlight these points rather and then move them and that's something i use quite a bit and then you can go back here and press accept or reset or delete whatever you want so in this case i'm going to delete it because i don't need it but yeah again you press w press w go to customize and then deformer just to show you what extender does this just extends stuff Okay, just like that. All right, and another thing I use here is the Z Remesher. It's under Geometry Z Remesher, and you can see that there's quite a few settings here, but I just use half, and then I cl keep clicking on Z Remesher. This will just take a second, and as you can see, it'll remesh the mesh, and sometimes it'll do a pretty terrible job, but in this case, you can say something like keep groups, and then Z Remesh, and see if that does a better job. Now, sometimes it'll flatten things out, it'll round things out. You just have to play around with the settings here, like detect edges, crease, stuff like that. And uh, like I said, I will use this quite a bit, just to, re just to remesh the thing and half the um, polygon count. Sometimes I don't care too much about what we get at the end. I just care about the actual polygons. But yeah, just uh, another thing I use quite a bit of. Okay, and another thing I use is pressing D for dynamic. You can press always yes. And that will create a little bit of a dynamic situation. You can't really see what's going on. So I'm going to go down to geometry. And you can see here we've got dynamic subdivision. This is the same thing. So if you activate this, this is what D does. Or you could press shift D to get out of that. So dynamic. And then what I like to do is I like to use thickness. And if I bump this up, you'll notice there'll be thickness here. Let me just bump that way up, just like that. Another thing I can do is I can go to creasing over here and I can crease that. And you can click on post subdiv and you'll notice there'll be a little bit of a, a bevel here. You won't really notice it too much because the crease level is way up. So I'll put that down to one, you notice that. So we're just playing around with this crease level here. So one, and it works in conjunction with this. So if this is up to four, and I bring this up to two, you'll notice that you can see there just a little bit of smoothing going on. So if this number here, the crease level is higher than this number here, it'll be very, very sharp. Okay, so if this number is equal to or less than, you'll start to get a little bit more of a fade. Okay, so that's also very important. So again, I'm using thickness, I'm using crease levels, and I'm using smooth subdivisions, and I'm switching off post subdivision. That's very important. Um, again, it's under dynamics. So if I switch this off, it's not actually doing anything. It's just a dynamic subdivision. It, it's not actual, it's not real geometry. Once I apply it, however, now it's real geometry. And now I can move it around all I want. Okay, the next thing I use here quite a bit is deformation over here. And I use inflate quite a bit, which is down over here. So you can just inflate stuff or deflate stuff. Okay, as you can see like that. Okay, and another thing I do use quite a bit is I'll use polish a few times. You won't see too much of a difference here, but it will polish the shape. So it's a little bit more clean around the edges. All right, now that we have some subdivisions. What we can also do, um, because they're actually real, we can go over here to delete lower, or we can bring it all the way down to one and then just delete higher. So in other words, we've got subdivisions and you can see the points here, they change as I change up the subdivisions. So I just wanna bring it back to one and then delete higher for our next one. We press B, Z, and then M, which is this here, the Z modeler. I use this quite a bit. So basically, if you want to change the polygon, in this case, you just hover over the polygon, hold down spacebar, and you can say what you want to do to it. So on a Q mesh, a single poly, and this is what it does. Okay, so if I again hold down spacebar, and I go to Q mesh, and I go to poly loop, in this case, it will take the loop. And by the way, in case you're wondering if I want to do the loop this way, okay, there's a little bit of a, uh, like an orange line, you can see it's pointing down, left or right, up. Okay, that's showing the direction it's going to loop. So that there is something that I use. And another thing I use, and you can also go for the, the edges, right? So the edges will give you a different menu. The points will give you a different menu. So just watch out for that. Another thing I use is stitch. 
Okay, I can click on this one, click on this one, they'll stitch together. Okay, and over here I also use collapse. So like that. That's something you want to keep in mind. And another thing I use is I also use polygroup. Okay, you can click on polygroup and this will just change the polygroup. Um, what you can also do is hold on alt, select the number of these ones. Okay, and you can just click on that and that'll change them all at once. So basically holding down alt and selecting a bunch of them will just say, I would like all of these to be changed and you can do that. And another thing I do is I go to insert single edge loop and this will also right something like that. So yeah, that's just a, a quick, very quick introduction to what I'm going to be doing throughout the video, like a lot of the tools I'm going to be using just so you don't get confused, but you can slow the video down and just have a look. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So we'll get on to the video next. All right, so first up, we just have the model over here and actually to get that out, you press the comma button, go to tool and we just want these the next human average. Okay, you can double click on that. It's a ZTL. It's uh, yeah, so what we can do is just delete a bunch of things. We don't need everything here. We just need the body. And then on the body, what we can do is just bake all these layers because we don't actually need the layers. We'll just bake them in. And then if you press shift D and then D again, you can go into dynamic mode and then under dynamic, I want to go to apply. So geometry, dynamic subdivisions, apply that. And then under the dynamics, we can see that it's, it's too many. So what I want to do is lower that down to two subdivisions, then delete higher and delete lower. And here we go. All right, so we can control shift, click and drag, and we've got the feet right here. And then we can actually press X because we only need one foot because we need one shoe. Uh, we can just mirror that, right? So just this, and we can delete hidden, by the way, and delete hidden. It's all the way over here under geometry, modify topology, and then delete hidden. So I'm just using my custom menu, which you can find down below, but geometry, modify topology, delete hidden, it's right there. And yeah, that's how you do that. So we finally have a foot, and this is my project here. I just changed the color, that's all. So just deleting that cylinder and yeah, we're pretty much on the same page here. Okay, another thing I'm gonna do is go to import textures and then I'm just gonna import all these references that I have and we can open all of those at once. Then we can go to texture and click on each one and then say add to spotlight, which is that bottom one, which is the button on the right over there. So click on each one and then add it to spotlight. And that's how you do that. Okay, I'm just gonna click on this button so we have them all divided on the left here. That just organizes it for us. Next, I'm going to bring this up here and then scale it up a little bit. Okay, not rotate it, but scale it. And I also wanted to look at opacity, which is over here. You can just rotate that and that will bring up the opacity. And then I'll click on paint. Okay, paint is on the top left there. Just click on that and then hold on control and alt and then click and drag. And that will just minus the background from your image, which, is, which of course is very useful because it can be kind of distracting while you're working in ZBrush. And you can use other programs to have pictures up while you work, but I like to do this in ZBrush. And since this is a ZBrush tutorial, we can just kind of do everything in ZBrush. Another thing you can do is go back to texture, click on the one you just modified and then go to export. And then you can export it as it is with the way you modified it. And if you click on save, you'll notice it doesn't have a background. I know it's black, but when it comes into ZBrush, it won't have a background and then you can save it. You can do that with all the other ones. I'm not gonna do that here. So I'm just gonna fast forward and here we go. So we're gonna call this foot and you should be pretty much where I am here. And I will duplicate that with control shift D because we want the foot as the actual foot and then we want the thing over that to be the shoe. So that'll be the, the gray thing is the shoe. And I just colored the foot red so we can tell the difference. That's the only reason. So I'm gonna Dynamesh this. Dynamesh, by the way, is under Geometry and then Dynamesh. And I just wanna make sure to disable Spotlight Projection. You can see it over here. All right, and to switch off the Spotlight Projection, you can go to Brush and then Samples and then you'll find Spotlight Projection there. Make sure you switch it off because otherwise your images will try and project onto your mesh which is what you don't want so brush samples switch spotlight projection off so here all i'm doing is just smoothing this out because of course we want the shoe shape and i just put the foot on there so i'm just going to inflate this the shoe not the foot i know they're both called foot but the gray one is the the shoe and the red one is the foot i'm just inflating that a little bit by the way inflate can be found under all the way down under deformation and that's just a separate menu called deformation and there's an inflate slider there which you can use Okay, so just doing some very basic sculpting here, moving things into place, and now I kind of fast forwarding through things because you don't need to see every stroke I make and every little menu and all that type of stuff. So just moving this here, getting the bottom of the shoe, this is quite important uh, view, I think. So I'm just activating move multi, move multi tool and you can see it on the top right there. All right, and now I'm just moving all of this. All right, and now I'm just using the move brush and just moving all of this and switching move multi-tool off as well. Make sure you switch, switch that off. 
So just getting the basic shape here and not being too exact, but trying to make sure it, it encapsulates the foot. Obviously the shoe goes over the foot, so it can't be like right next to the foot. It doesn't really make any sense. And I'll admit this foot is kind of wonky, so I should probably use a better foot, but that's okay. So you're using deformers. If you press W, you can get out the gizmo. And then on the top left, you'll have that setting sign, which you can click on and you'll find deformation or the, the deformer. And I have videos on how to use a deformer. Uh, or you can just move it manually. Either one works. So yeah, just moving things into place and getting the overall shape of the shoe. And this is pretty much the mentality that you need for anything, whether you're building a person, a shoe, a building, whatever it is. Um, so now I'm duplicating that. Control shift, control shift dragging just to get a separate piece here and then flattening that out just so we have the bottom of the shoe. So this is called a base and I re Z remesh that quite a few times. So Z remesher is under geometry and then Z remesher. And you can just click on half and keep Z remeshing that. And what it will do is it will Z remesh it to a lower topology, which in this case we do need. So now what I'm doing is going to dynamic subdivisions and adding thickness to it. Okay, just so I can get the thickness of the base. Just adjusting it there and yeah, that doesn't look too bad for now. We can always adjust it. Okay, a little bit of a pointed edge there, but I'll sort it out later. So now, or I'll sort it out now a little bit. And yeah, just kind of finicking around with things here, especially creasing. Okay, you'll see it down there. And all right, so next up, just getting the base to where I think it should be. I think this is good enough for now. Obviously, we just want simple shapes and just moving this foot or the shoe rather into place. So pulling it down just so it kind of blends into it and there's not like this weird space in between that. And the shoe particularly doesn't have like a weird space between the base and the shoe itself. It's kind of comparing the base to the picture there and that looks pretty good. And I do have perspective on, but it's a very basic perspective, it's nothing crazy. And here just kind of moving the, the foot so it kind of fits. Um, here again just resizing the whole thing okay and from this view that's not too bad so obviously cutting that off because we don't need that and shaping it so really that's all I'm doing for this first couple of parts here just shaping getting the basic shape getting the basic feel of what the shoe looks like in this form in this block out form and then we can start adding as we go so I'm kind of eyeballing it for the most part and then also comparing it to the pictures Oh, yeah, again, we're moving on to the base. You can see it's quite thick on the on the reference. Uh, mine, it's not so crazy. I did create a duplicate here, I think, and I'm just going to uncrease all and then crease. And we can just bump up this crease level here. So smooth subdivision, we're bumping that, and then the crease level, I'm bumping that down to one. And that affects how beveled the edge is. Okay, so yeah, using the, the Z modeler, BZM, and then um, using Q mesh to pull this out. Okay, so Q mesh. Z modeler BZM just to pull that out and then I'm going to island and then I'm insetting this okay so inset island just so I can get that lip on the shoe that we see there okay I think that's pretty good I'm going to press W control click to mask that then I can pull this up so it gives me a nice gradual rise there and here I just redid it that's all I did okay so I undid it and then redid it and these edges here are really annoying me so that's gonna affect us later on. So making sure to kind of move them, right mask them and then move them and making sure that I have perspective off for this because you don't wanna do it with perspective on cause it'll kind of mess up your, um, just the plane it's on. So just deleting and I'm using the Z modeler for this. So BZM, the Z modeler, you can move things with this and you can also delete edges and move edges and stitch edges or stitch points. So that's really what I'm doing there. And yeah, this tutorial is, um, you know, I don't want to make it like this long tutorial where I explain everything I'm doing. You do have to have, you do have to be just a little bit proficient in ZBrush, but I do have a bunch of tutorials on how to use the Z modeler, so you can check that out as well. And the whole idea there was to get a proper edge loop so it doesn't mess with my topology. This isn't a game ready model or anything, but I'm just doing that because later on it will annoy me. Um, so here, next, what I'm doing is I'm trying to get that lip on the shoe, right? just on the edge there. So with all shoes, they roll up a little on the edge, just like this. So with the uh, with the deformer, what I'm doing is just pulling this up here. And again, if you don't know how to use the deformer, you can check out my tutorials. Um, but yeah, so just press W, go to the customize, and there'll be a deformer there that you can use. And you can use the arrows, the, um, the orange arrows to add or detract from the control points. Okay, I'm doing the same thing to the shoe now, not the base, but the actual shoe itself. 
Okay, and now I'm uh, duplicating the base or the shoe rather, I'm duplicating the shoe and I'm creating that gray piece that we see there. I'm just using masking and I'm just doing it over the picture so I can have some sort of a guide there. And I'm pressing Control Shift E and I don't have my, my, you can't see the keys I'm pressing, but yeah, I'm pressing Control Shift E and then Z remeshing this by half each time. So under Z remesher, you'll see there's a half uh, setting there. You can click on that and then go into dynamics. So pressing D for dynamics and then making sure thickness is on. So again, dynamic is under geometry, dynamic, and you'll see it there. So just duplicating this and mirror and wilding and then just moving this into place. So now we're kind of moving on to the secondary shapes. Not really finals, but secondary. Okay, so we're getting this piece here that wraps around the back of the shoe and the sides. Okay, again, just masking and yeah, I'm kind of eyeballing it. Okay, and then Z remeshing. So Control Shift E and each time I'm duplicating it uh, just to create these pieces. So I have the base or the normal shoe and then I'm duplicating that just to get each piece like that you see here. Okay, and to get the same thickness as the outer quarter there, what I'm doing is I'm just merging it with the outer quarter and then splitting it. And then when you split something from something else, it keeps the same dynamic settings. So yeah. So here I'm doing the same thing with the toe guard. So all I'm doing is just duplicating this one dynamesh piece that we have here and then masking it and then Control Shift E to get a nice clean um, edge around that. And then all I'm doing is just using Z remesher and then going back and forth. And here I'm masking this out as well. And yeah, so I'm just pressing Control Shift E to get different poly groups, and then that way I can kind of deal with them separately. Same thing here, I'm just... And again, I know I'm moving pretty fast here, but uh, I don't want this tutorial to be too long. It's, it's already an hour, so... I mean, we're 10 minutes in, but the whole thing is an hour, so yeah. <laughs> again, as long as you know how to use ZBrush, some of these things shouldn't be too crazy to follow along with but if it is you can just slow the video down and see what I'm doing and that shouldn't be too hard to follow all right so next we have the tongue of the shoe and just again just duplicating that uh, the bigger piece and then separating this out and in this case I'm not really using uh, dynamics I'm just dynameshing it because it has more of a more of an organic shape and so that's all I'm doing there same thing with this part of the shoe okay control shift click and drag and there we go Okay, and for here I could have I, I could have done a better job, but I don't know why I did this, but I did it. So, yeah, I'm just using the clay build up to push in, and a little bit of I'm just deleting some areas as well, but using the clay build up just to push in and kind of shape this. Again, there could have been a I could have done that better, but yeah. So here it is, and I'm just shaping that as well, and yeah, nothing too crazy. As you can see, the shoe is kind of uh, coming together, and we're just building it up slowly but surely, and adjusting things, and then. Making sure I'm going back and forth with the pictures and it might not look exact exact but by the end it's I think a pretty good likeness. Um, but the whole idea behind this was just as a study kind of just because shoes are people wear shoes so you need to know how to make them. So yeah. Again using the deformer okay W go to the customize button which is that settings button on the top left and then you can use the deformer. Okay, and I'm also using the move brush, but it's a lot easier to use the deform. I'm using the move brush to kind of uh, just get in the, the smaller pieces there. And now we're going to move on to a little bit of hard surface modeling. So just getting this piece here and to do what I did there, by the way, just make sure you're on paint, hold on alt, and you can click and drag to minus from the picture. Okay, so here all I did was I just took uh, a cube, right, and I'm just customizing it. That's really all I'm doing. So yeah, nothing too crazy there. Just using a little bit of dynamics with dynamic thickness and just moving. And then I decided to, I think I delete this part. Yeah, I delete the one face because I don't like that. And then I customize it to my liking and then I go back to dynamics. This is an actual, this is actual geometry that we're working with here. And this isn't important. And then I'm bringing out a cylinder. Okay, copying that, control click and drag to copy that. Using the extender in the deformers or the modifiers rather. And then pulling this one out with the extrude. Okay, and then I will create a folder here. Okay, so now I'm slowing things down. I have a folder here with all of them and I'm gonna go to Boolean folder. And what that will do is that will mark all of these as, what I did was I first mark them as subtract. You can see there, subtract, subtract, and then uh, whole. And then all I'm doing here is just kind of, I'm, I'm just taking the faces and then customizing them. Yeah, that's, that's really all I'm doing. I'm just making sure it's a flat proper piece and then I'm extruding it and then zero meshing it and then 
I'm just kind of going back between Z mesh and then extrude and then customizing the piece. Uh, this probably isn't the best way to do this. Here, just masking it because I wasn't happy. Again, it's a very small piece, no one's gonna notice, so you don't have to go too crazy. Uh, here, I still have dynamic thickness on. I don't think I get rid of dynamics at any point until like right at the end, yeah. So that's this piece, obviously we can control, click and drag to copy that. Okay, and I, I copied it wherever else it needed to be. You don't have to see me doing that. So yeah, just adding a little bit more nuance to these pieces. And hey, speaking of nuance, if you want to add more to your work, you can check out my new website and Discord channel, and you can also check out my paid tutorials. Don't forget about those. Links down below. Okay, so same thing, just making sure, and now I'm just adding these grooves in between here. So I'm just masking it off because we don't need to add it to the whole thing, just this one area. And just using the damn standard and then clicking and dragging and just trying to see if I can get it exact. And yeah, it's not exact, but I mean, it, it works. So yeah, I think that's fine. And then here, just trying to trying to guess, right, the, the distance there and then just doing that. And yeah, I think it's good enough, right? Given all the detail that we see, you're not going to notice that some of them are slightly off. And yeah, I just inflated it a little bit there and I'm just moving it and that's about it for that one for now. For this one, I did Z remesh this one, okay? Um, I, didn't, I just didn't show you that. But yeah, you can just Z remesh it, nothing crazy. And I'm just duplicating this, masking it because I want that um, the Adidas, well, I won't use the Adidas logo, but I want that patch on the Adidas logo. So I'm just masking it, right? Creating the patch there, Control Shift E. Okay, Z remeshing that, Z remeshing it, and then you can polish it to get a little bit of the smoother edges there. Okay, there you go. Uh, again, using dynamics, so D for dynamic, and you can go to the dynamics menu, which is under geometry, and then dynamics. And here on this piece, which I think is, I'm not too sure if this is the, yeah, I think it's the um, the dynamics, not the dynamics version, the, um, the Z remeshed version. So all I'm doing is just using the damn standard and then just getting these grooves in. Trying to be uh, roughly accurate, uh, kind of accurate here. And yeah, that seems to be good enough. I don't think it goes past the Adidas patch. So yeah, we should be fine. All right, so up next we have laces. We can go to curve, flat, snap. And I am using dynamics with this. And I did customize a few things, but I don't think you need to because I don't think the laces are like that. So curve, flat, snap, use it along with dynamics, a dynamic thickness. Okay, and that's all I'm doing here. So I'm just trying to work out the length and kind of what I have to do, because obviously laces, um, they weave in a, sp in a specific uh, way. And also the thickness, if it's too thin, it'll look a little bit weird, and if it's too thick, I mean, I think it's better to err on the side of thickness, making it too thick. Um, yeah, this can be a bit finicky because I'm over a few subtools, but I just do it from the other side and that works. And yeah, that's about it. So, and all you have to do next is just keep doing the same thing over and over again. I'm not going to show you that, but yeah, you get the point. You know how laces work and you know how this works. You know how dynamics work by now. So yeah, and there it is. Okay. So next up, I'm just copying that piece and deleting everything just so I can make that piece that holds the laces together. So just adding some, inserting some edges here with the Z modeler. And then there you go. Adding dynamics. So D for dynamic, adding thickness to that. There we go over there. Right, just like that. And then over here, you can extrude. Okay, I'm just extruding that. And there we go, All right? So thickness and then a little bit of creasing. And then you just make sure the creases aren't too crazy in terms of the subdivision levels and you should be fine. So you're adding the lace, which you can't see on the model, but I do want that because obviously, um, well, I guess it depends what you want. So in this case, I did want the laces, so I'm putting one there. Masking it, adding a little bit of twist just to give it a little bit of personality, right? It can't be just this plain piece because uh, laces do twist and turn and move. So doing that and then, yeah. All I'm doing here is duplicating it and moving it to the other side and then just customizing that as well. I won't show that. There it is, okay. Yeah, okay. So moving on to the base, just using a little bit of the deformer and then pushing that up because there's a little bit of a lift on the back of the shoe Again, it helps us when we were walking, right? It helps roll the shoe. So your shoes aren't completely flat towards the end and the beginning. They are actually rolled up. 
So here, all I'm doing is I'm insetting this piece. So there's a little bit of a frame around it. Okay, so insetting. So the Z modeler, BZM, inset. Next, you want to go to stroke and you go all the way down to curves helper. And that's not the one. <laughs> you go back up. I think it's under curve functions. There you go. Switch off border, switch off creased edges, and you say frame mesh for poly groups. This will frame the whole thing. And then you go to a curve brush. And here I have my own custom stitch brush. Okay. I'll show, you how you, I'll show you guys how to make that in one of the videos. I forgot where it is. All you do is you just click on this and it'll um, it'll just run the stitches around that, which is very useful. So we don't have to manually place the stitches. It'll just run it for us because we framed the mesh and it's doing it for us. So now all I'm doing is just moving it into place. Nothing crazy there. Here I'm just using the slice brush. So control shift, if you click on the slice brush, it'll do this. If you hold on control and space bar, you can click on B radius, which I did there very quickly. So control and space bar, or control and right click and there's, there's a menu that will come up and it'll say b radius you can click on that and then now it'll give you two slices depending on the thickness or the size of your brush that's all i'm doing here and technically it would just be easier to make the stitches or just um draw the stitches on but i made it complicated by doing all of this and as you can see it's a round trip so you don't have to do this but i'm just showing you because we will use this technique later on so doing the same thing framing the mesh and then, which again is under stroke and then curve modifiers or curve functions and then frame mesh. Okay, then you just click on it with your um, curve brush and then that'll sort that out for you automatically. All right, so here just creating, um, I am just using, all right, we're creating that black piece, the black bar around the, um, the shoe there. Yeah, so that's all I'm doing. Um, in order to do that, all I did was I just duplicated the base. I used the Z modeler to get some loops around there, right, with the polygroups. And then, it's, and then you just need to delete the rest. That's, it's nothing crazy. Okay, here, just straightening some things out and then adding some edges here, adding some loops, just so it's better when we press, con uh, con when we press D for dynamic. Same thing here on this side. I did the same thing, right? You don't need to see me doing that. I just uh, went to dynamics, put dynamic on, and here we have it. And yeah, that's pretty much it here. Again, I know I'm going very quickly, but <laughs> the point is to kind of like show you a few techniques and then just so you get the hang of it. So you're just masking that out and then moving it just so it has, because there's a little bit of an inflation on that on the toe guard there, or whatever it's called. Um, so you'll see there, that's what I'm just trying to mimic. All right, so next we just need this piece here. I'm just including that, um, I don't know what that's called, at the back of the shoe there, right? And I'm just using extrude over here. Okay, make sure you're, you're creasing everything and then uh, you can say uh, uncrease everything and you can make sure that the crease tolerance is very low. So you just crease the edges. Okay, and here you want to make sure that attraction is switched off. There's a setting called attraction or something along those lines under for your Z modeler. If you switch that on, it will attract to the pieces um, already there, which is very annoying. So make sure it's off. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll notice it when you're doing it. You'll see it attract to other pieces and it's very annoying. And you see it here, it's happening, right? So I switched it off. That's what that's what I'm talking about. And yeah, I just did the same thing, made sure that it was um, creased. And yeah. So here doing the same thing again, insetting that with the Z modeler. So insetting it and then right getting the frame mesh and i already did that before so you don't have to see me do it again so frame mesh doing that and then so that's how i get the lace or the stitches in oh and by the way you're probably thinking you can do this in substance painter yes i know that i'm just doing everything in zbrush to kind of show you what you can do in zbrush i wouldn't do this in zbrush if it was for a game obviously you would do it in substance painter because you can um customize everything and here all i'm doing is just using the slice brush with B radius, so B radius again, hold on control and spacebar, you'll get the B radius menu, switch it on. And what it is, is it's dependent on the size of the brush and it'll make two slices depending on the size of the brush. Make sure you switch it off though, because B radius can be a nuisance if you don't realize it's on. So now I'm going back to stroke, frame mesh, making sure it's just with poly groups. We get all of these, we can click on that with a uh, curve brush of our choice. Make sure it's the stitch brush in this case, I'm gonna select my stitch brush, click on that and there we go. And I think I was off by one with one of these, or I added an extra one. I didn't, I didn't notice until later on, but again, that's okay. Not too big of a deal. Um, yeah, here we go. So here we have our stitches and you don't need to see me move them. I'm just moving them. And 
Yeah, I got double. I don't know why I got double, but yeah. I just, I'm just trying to figure that out. By the way, this version of ZBrush does, it's a little bit weird with the, um, uh, the, the curve brushes. So yeah. So you're yeah, just drawing in the rest. That's why I have to draw in a normal curve and then draw in with a stitch brush because the stitch brush, my custom brushes don't work with this new version of ZBrush. So I need to update it to get rid of that. But I don't want to update just in case it messes something else up. So I'm like, <laughs> I can live with this one. In case you're using the normal slice brush, I'm not using it with a B radius to so make sure to switch that off. Just slicing all these edges here just so I can get the stitches in. Okay, this is obviously a duplicate by the way. Don't do this on the actual piece. Okay, so doing that, and we only need it on these areas, so I'm just deleting everything else. Then framing mesh, clicking on this, and then there you go, we've got our stitches. So yeah, I'm using the curved cube to attach this piece here. All right, and just like that. So we have that piece there. It's like this, the kind of framing around the toe or the, the tongue. Yeah, I'm just using poly group. Okay, I'm using the Z modeler, so BZM poly group, uh, poly loop. Make sure it's on the loops and then I'm just selecting all these areas so I can just shrink it down a little bit so it looks like it's stitched into the um, into the material. Just gives it that uh, a better look. So again, making sure I have all of them, I'm masking it. Okay, and here I forgot to do all of these pieces, so I'm doing that. So the inside, make sure you do that. And here I'm just inflating it or deflating it, I forgot which one I used, and there we go. So you get that nice little lip around there. And I'm also polishing it just a little bit because it was a little bit sharp and that kind of looks odd. So yeah. Uh, next up we're doing this piece here. All I'm doing is just the clay build up and a little bit of damn standard just to make it look like it's this puffy kind of piece there. And yeah, not too important really. I wasn't too worried about it, but yeah. It's here, so I figured I'd do it. And yeah, that's about it. Using the standard brush, the clay build up. And I did the same thing on this side. I didn't show you that I did it, but yeah, you should know by now how to actually do all of this stuff, so that should be fine. And there's all our stitches. All I'm doing now is I'm just organizing the stitches into different groups just to make them easier to select. So make sure you're doing that. It's a bit of a hassle to do it now, but again, you would do that in substance. You wouldn't have to worry about it in ZBrush, but just keep yourself organized and that'll help you out. So yeah, all I'm doing is inserting a plane, dividing it all the way up to 16 million polygons. And I'm just going to show you guys that you can use alphas to create logos. So I'm just going to show you how to create a quick logo in ZBrush. This is my logo, obviously. And I'm just bringing this in. I'm switching spotlight projection on, not off. And I'm using BPA to paint this on. Okay, so spotlight projection is on, not off. And I'm using BPA, which is the paintbrush, to paint this on. Right, there we go. And then all I'm doing is going to masking and then saying mask by poly paint over there. And then clicking and dragging this on the black and letting go. And then press OK. That will mask all the black. Okay, you can't see it now. You can't see it now, but I'm, after I click on Paint, you can now clearly see the mask. I'll press Control Shift E, and I'll just get that separately, and then Z remesh that. So that's kind of how you do logos in ZBrush. Not the best way. I'll probably do it in Blender actually, because ZBrush, depending on how complex it is, this is just another method of doing it. You don't have to do it this way. But I feel yeah, ZBrush can be very finicky, especially with this stuff. So just zero meshing it and you can see uh, I'm kind of unhappy with some of these, some of these, um, uh, with the topology. It's a little bit weird. So all I'm doing is just going back and forth. And so again, all I did was I got a plane out, divided up to 16 million polygons, brushed this over as an alpha with spotlight projection on, made sure to mask it with the masking down below, uh, mask by intensity, mask by color rather. And then I just um, zero mesh that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm just trying to think about how I'm gonna do the logo. So this is what I went with Just a circle and then a ring around that circle and then the the actual logo is within that. So yeah uh, Nothing too crazy But I think it, sh it should be simple. It shouldn't be anything over the top So yeah, that's about it I'll just fill in the middle piece over there like that with another piece of geometry I'm giving it very low poly by the way just like this because what I'm going to do is go down to create insert mesh. I'm going to say new. And there you go. So you can just click and drag that in, which is very useful because I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, my name here. So create insert mesh. I'll say append. So it appends to that. You can see on the top left there, we can select between the two, which is great. You can then go to brush. This isn't going to work for me, but brush modifiers go all the way to projection strength. And I'm saving because I know it might crash. 
And what you can do is click and drag. And once you click and drag the logo over any geometry, because of the projection strength, it'll project over. But because ZBrush is being ZBrush, it crashes on me. So I won't be able to use this method. It might also be the same for you. So just save, just save before you do anything. So yeah, I'm just using the deformer manually. And I could probably just use the move brush would have been better. But yeah, um, that's what I did here. So there we go. And yeah, I mean, you can't really tell that I use the move brush. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but it does kind of suck that I can't use projection strength. And I think it's because of the size of my logo. The um, I don't mean the size is in the physical size. I mean the size is in the um, the number of points. So the, the topology. Creating the other logo here that we see on the side at the bottom of the shoe, the bottom left there. Pretty simple. So my name, logo, and then a piece of geometry behind that. And yeah, this is just basic modeling, nothing crazy. And then combining all of that into one piece and moving it into place. And next, all I'm doing here is just using the standard brush just to get these areas popped out. Uh, pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, there's, there's, yeah, there's not a lot of modeling actually going on after, after this point. And speaking of modeling, I am adding a little bit of creases here and there just to kind of suggest that the shoe has, it's not a very rigid thing, right? But, and also not too much because it's not a brand new, I mean, it's not an old shoe, it's a brand new shoe. So it, it, will, have, it will have a little bit of buckling here and there, but nothing crazy. Um, here, another piece of geometry. I'm doing this to create the bottom of the shoe. You can see that, that pattern over there. So just masking every second piece here. So one, skip, two, skip, three, skip, right? And then pushing that up or pulling that up. And there we go. So just getting it to kind of where I want it. And I'm just reducing the opacity there and reducing the size on this one just to kind of see what I get. So there we go, I'm moving that into place. Yeah, that should be good enough. So I'm gonna press D for dynamic, bring up the crease tolerance, okay, crease it again just to see what I get. And I will have to add manual creases here. So I'm just going to BZM so for my Z modeler and adding creases manually here so you can see it, what I'm doing here. Okay, again, that didn't really work out too well. So I'm gonna crease all the edges here. And if you know how hard surfacing works, you know what I'm doing here. If you don't, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a little bit harder to understand. Um, but basically, I'm just reinforcing all these edges here, and I did, yeah. So just like that. So reinforcing basically every way it turns, I'm putting an edge, and you can see it there, right? There we go. So I, I do still have thickness on, and a little bit of thickness, a little bit of creasing, and there we go. That looks good enough to me. So yeah, that's all I'm doing there. And then what I'm going to do next is just create a duplicate. So I'm holding down control. I'm still holding down control when I'm when I'm satisfied with where it should be. I'm going to let go of control and drag up. I did this too fast. That's why I kind of freaked out on me. So I'm going to hold down control again, still holding control and then let go of control and then drag up and it'll create duplicates as you go up. So this is a good way to create multiple duplicates with the same spacing apart. Okay, so again, hold on control, drag up. Once you're satisfied with the distance, let go of control and continue dragging up and it'll continue to copy. Okay, we don't need to make more because that's good enough for now. And here I'll just create another plane. Okay, divide it up a little bit and then using the slice curve with B radius on, I'll slice this area here just to create those patterns that we see there. Okay, and I only need over one piece here. So that's what I'm doing just like that. And yeah, that's that's good enough. It doesn't have to be exact, exact. No one's going to spot us on that. So we'll be fine. And here, all I'm doing is just making sure that they all have the correct polygroups by masking and isolating and pressing Control W to make sure. And again, I don't believe I don't have my um, my key, um, my key log so you can see what I was doing. Anyway, that's OK. Uh, so here, all I'm doing is creating the lip around these edges here for the base. I just created a duplicate of it, obviously, and then so BZM and then poly group and then poly loop just to get these loops. And now you can see that loop is really helping us as well. That we made earlier on, remember when I was trying to correct that. And here, if you just hold on Alt and then click and drag, you can create a white uh, poly group, which is basically highlighting an area saying, uh, I want this to be affected. And in that case, all I did was I just said poly group and then made that the same poly group as the uh, surrounding areas. Okay, yeah, just manually creasing these edges. Um, I think I'm creasing by poly group. That's what I'm doing. And then here as well. So just messing around with the creasing, just trying to see what I can do, what I can get right. And over here, 
we also need to highlight this area. So Alt, click and drag. And with the Z modeler, you need to do that, by the way. So Alt, click and drag with the Z modeler. That'll make everything white. And you can say, I just want to work on this area here. Okay, I'm just getting the same poly group and then. Okay, so just adjusting a few things here, making sure it's not too wobbly or sharp. And also I kind of forgot that it affects the other side, so I masked it and then kind of redid it over, over here again. And finally, we're moving on to the base of the base of the shoe, okay, the bottom of the shoe. So I'm just moving this in and then customizing it, making sure, and I think I still have um, dynamics on. And here, just copying that over, control, clicking and dragging. And I think I apply dynamics here, I apply all my dynamics. So now this is one piece and I'm just um, getting rid of all of these pieces here because I don't need them. Just for now, just so I can get that in there, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Then of course, using the deformer just to push that in, just to make it easier. And then moving all of these pieces as well. And we can of course just, so I created a duplicate here, I think, and I'm just moving that into place. Okay, moving that into place. And I just fast forwarded through that. You don't need to see me doing that. And here, just using the slice tool, just to slice all of this, control clicking and then deleting hidden. Same thing here, slicing, control clicking, deleting hidden. And I'll do the same thing with these pieces here as well. Now I did forget to make them all one poly group. So when I do this, it messes everything up because I'm like, okay, there's too many poly groups here. So I had to undo that and press control W just to make it all one poly group. And then now I can do that. So slice it and then control click. And then yeah, now here just using the move rush, just, uh, you know, getting in the smaller pieces, nothing too crazy here. Oh uh, yeah, so that's about it. All right, so next up we have the logo. There's a logo on the back there or on the bottom. So I'm just using that and uh, getting that into place. Here, the inside of the shoe, okay, where your heel goes, just kind of getting that in as well. And yeah, just trying to see what I can make out here. I'm press, I'm control clicking on the history bar there just to remember what this looks like. So basically I'm storing the points, okay, where they are in space, kind of. Um, I don't think that's what it does exactly. So <laughs> that's definitely not what it does. And so I'm just Z remesh or remeshing this with Dynamesh. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to Z remesh it with the BZR. So you've got these Z remesher guides. Okay, so BZR and or BR. I forgot what it was, but anyway, you'll see there in the menu. What I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm, I'm basically saying, oh, when you Z remesh this, these are the guides I want you to use. So in other words, go in this direction here that I'm specifying. So don't do your own thing, do what I'm specifying here. Okay, you don't need to see me doing all of that. I'm just, uh, you know, putting a bunch of lines and zero meshing it here, making sure the curve strength is all the way up, just so it kind of adheres to that. Um, so just going back and forth here, trying to see what works with the target polygons and the adaptive strength and also the curve strength. And yeah, it's uh, so the adaptive strength, I think I put it higher, that seems to be fine. So I'm just doing it again on top of this because I feel this is fine. And then I just did it again, just to make sure but yeah, you don't need to see me doing it. And so here, just going back here and just doing a little bit of clay build up just to bump up these areas, right? Because it's kind of like that on the shoe. So now we're, we're kind of getting to the detail phase, right? We're definitely past the block in, way past the block in, and we're on the secondary uh, details. And then we'll get to the finals a little bit later on. Okay, so now I'm masking this by control clicking and they should have the same area there. So I'm going to the noise tab. Okay, so noise. And then go to surface you click on that or surface then noise and then over here under noise maker okay so hit frame which is on the top left there that will frame the mesh so you can actually see it i'm adding just a little bit of noise so i'm clicking on 3d there's a few things you can click on but i think this is good enough so the noise scale we can bring that down we can bring up the strength as well of the noise right now it's only 500,000 points which i think is actually too little you can bump that up to about you can divide it again just to see what you get and it should be better So I'm also making sure to use layers here and yeah, it's a little too subtle. So definitely bump up the polygon count. Here I'm doing the exact same thing, just going to surface and then noise, making sure to use layers as well. Again, you would do all this in Substance Painter, but I'm doing it in ZBrush because we're working in ZBrush just to kind of show you that you can do all of this in ZBrush just to kind of finish everything off in ZBrush. Um, but again, if you're working on game design or something, you would never do this <laughs> in ZBrush. You would do it in Substance Painter because it's far easier to control but that's why I'm using layers here just to give it um, a little bit more freedom to work with. So if I need to delete something or change something, it'll be a little bit easier to do so. Uh, right here, what I'm doing is I'm dragging alphas out. So I'm going to my standard brush, changing the alphas to this leather alpha, which I downloaded from the ZBrush 
Pixel, the Pixel Logic site. Um, it's free. Just type in Pixel Logic Alphas and you should find this. I'm also masking by polygroups, which can be found here brush, modify, or auto masking. And then there's mask by polygroup, and then there's a back face masking over here. So switch that on and mask by polygroup. You can switch that, turn that all the way to 100. And back face masking as well, switch that on. Make sure to turn all of this off when you are done. Again, go to brush, auto masking, there's back face masking, and then mask by polygroups. That, that slide I, I slide all the way up. Basically, it's saying work on one piece at a time um, so you don't nick any of the other pieces there. So you're doing the same thing, just using that leather um, alpha that I got from the ZBrush site, which again is free. Okay, this time using the noise modifier. Okay, so here we're going to get a little bit more creative. And what I'm going to do is just firstly mask off this area here. And what you want to do is, is do this on the lower lower subdivs. So I did it on the high one, which was a mistake, and press Ctrl W. So here all I'm doing is just basically fixing all of this. So all I'm doing is getting an area that just has um, like separated topology. So here it is again. It has subdivisions, by the way, so don't forget about that. I'm going to go to Z Plugin, UV Master, and then say Work on Clone. Make sure you go to Z Plugin, UV Master, Work on Clone. You can see the clone right here. It says CL Tongue, so Clone Tongue. Next, I'm going to go down to Enable Control Painting and then say Attract. Okay, so Attract, it'll be blue, which means when I'm, un so I'm unwrapping this, in case you're wondering what I'm doing. So I'm unwrapping this so we can apply an, a repeating pattern, a repeating alpha. So here, all the blue, it's basically saying these areas you can cut. Okay, um, if you don't know what unwrapping is, definitely Google that and check out a few videos. Then you can say Unwrap, it'll unwrap it, and then after that you can go down to Flatten. This is what it looks like. I'll press W, make sure you're not working in um, in perspective. So press W, and I want this to be straight. So that piece there specifically needs to be kind of straight. So this piece here. I'll say copy UVs and I'll go to the original and then say paste UVs. Okay, this will take the UVs from that, paste it in here. There we go, paste UVs. Okay, paste it in here and now we can add um, alphas. So repeating alphas. So I'll first create a new layer. I'll make sure to mask this off here. Okay, so new layer, masking that off, and then we can go to noise. Okay, we can go to noise. Now we can work on the UV. Okay, so the noise plugin, uh, we can cl click on that, and then we can go over here to hex tile, and then okay, and it's it's pretty big, so you can't see, you can see that one massive line there. So uh, mix basic noise, you can switch it off, and then plugin scale, bring that all the way down. I know um, I didn't click on UV, but you'll see what I mean. In, you'll see what that does in a second. This is before I unwrapped it. So plug in scale, you can see there it is. Okay. So that's what I was doing. So yeah, we can work on UV, not 3D, but UV noise plugin. And we can bring up the noise scale. There we go. So that's what I'm talking about. So hex noise plugin, select the hexagons. And then yeah, this is what I'm using. And you'll see what I'm doing in a second. Right, so just adjusting some things, that noise plugin is very useful. I'm just getting the angles and the, the size correct. We didn't unwrap this properly, so it's not going to be perfect. So bringing down the scale quite a bit, and I'm saying mask by noise. Okay, there we go. So I'm just control clicking and inverting that, and then control clicking again, just to blur it. And then I can inflate that, or deflate it rather, by minus one. And there we go, that's the pattern I was looking for, and there we have it. So yeah, not bad at all. So we're doing the same thing here. Okay. Uh, we don't need everything. So what I'm doing is I'm just masking off that area, pressing Control W. Okay, again, working on clone, saying attract, just to paint that in. By the way, this paintbrush will come with the, uh, while you're unwrapping that thing. I'm just saving just in case and then I'll say unwrap and then flatten and I'm just orientating that so it makes sense. Okay, then masking that out again, creating a new layer, going to the uh, the noise plugin or noise and then uh, the plugin and then doing the exact same thing I did. That's all I, I, again, I know I'm working pretty fast, but I don't want the video to be too long. I just did exactly what I did with the, with the tongue. You can just go back there to see what I did and yeah, that shouldn't be too much of a hassle. 
So again, masking that piece out and I want to add another pattern here. Make sure you create a new layer as well first. I'm creating a grid and you can see in real time I'm moving this around to the grid with what that's doing. And even if you press OK, you can always go back because this area here is basically the preview before you click on OK. OK, so again, I'm going to edit and you can edit it in real time as you can see here. Right to grid, the grid thickness. OK, rotating that, you can rotate the angles. That's good enough. I'm just making sure that the size, don't make it too small, but as you can see, I've got it on 7 million polygons, so it can be pretty small. Um, and then I'm applying that masking by noise, I'm not applying it, but masking it by noise. And then, yeah, you can kind of customize it. I think I just inflated it a little bit. I'm going to do it now, actually. Yeah, so masking that off and then inflating it just a little bit. So like that, and then reducing the layer. So I'm inflating it and then reducing the layer. So just a few um, kind of smart uses of the layer and inflate and all that type of stuff. Again, I, I know I'm going pretty fast here, but that's kind of the point just to kind of show you guys like, yeah, you can kind of do these things, you know, and then figure that out on your own. Um, which I know people don't like, but again, this, I don't want this video to be like two hours, it's a bit too much. Okay, doing the same thing here, masking, creating a new layer, making sure, all that stuff. Okay, so here in between the layers, what I'm doing is creating another layer and I'm making sure to use the damn standard just to um, divide these areas here because obviously they're different and you can see I did kind of an, an okay job with the damn standard, but no one's actually going to see that. So people get caught up on being very exact and I think no one's going to see that. You're, you don't have to be that exact. So you're just masking off this area because I need it to be a different color. Not a different color, a different poly group. And here, just creating the hex tiles again. And it is unwrapped, but kind of in a weird way. So the hex tiles are going to be a bit wonky. So just changing the Z angle and all that type of stuff. Just to make sure it's in the right direction. And yeah, something along those lines. Messing with the strength, so on and so forth. Mask by noise. Okay, and then deflating that as well. And yeah, it's kind of the pattern that we have on the shoe. Not exactly, but yeah, I figure this is close enough. So yeah. And again, because we didn't unwrap it properly, that's why it looks a bit wonky here. Okay, again, do not apply it to the mesh, just mask by noise. We're just using the noise as a mask. So if you apply it, um, you that's kind of the, the wrong thing. That's, we don't want to do that. So you have the same thing on this side of the tongue, right? So we, we had to divide. I should have actually divided it into uh, polygroups before I did all this, but I didn't. I only, only had one polygroup, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. You guys can watch this and then make your own decisions on how many polygroups you need. Okay, so same thing, blurring, inverting, blurring, um, making use of the layer. Okay, bringing that down a little bit. So you can take the layer and you can bring down the layer, the layer intensity. And that's why it's good to use layers. You can see me doing it there. And then the same thing on this piece, the, the the tag, I don't know what it is. So I just unwrapped it as well. Remember to work on clone. And remember we're using the we're using subdivisions here. We, we're not you can't use Dynamesh for this because Dynamesh is way too high. You can't unwrap Dynamesh. I mean you probably could, but it might crash your computer. And then here just adding the stitches. That's all I'm doing. So there you go. You don't need to see me do that. I'm just moving into place now, but yeah, that's about it. Okay, so next, the lace. Again, this is a brand new shoe, but uh, we want it to look a little bit organic, and right now it looks way too sort of manufactured. So the laces, you can add quite a bit of bumping and movement to it, right, just a little bit here and there. And I didn't add as much as I wanted to, so you guys can definitely go a little bit more. You can see the picture. It is quite, not chaotic, but it is moving over and under, and it's sagging and moving up. And here, just adding a cube just for the lace ends. Nothing crazy. Oh, and I didn't show you the laces that I did, but I just used a weave pattern on them. Basically the same thing I did for the shoe and just use an alpha and I unwrapped the, the laces as well. So you can do that on your own. I'm here just trying to get the laces in there. And what I do is I just hide all the layers because it's a, it gets a little bit noisy to look at the layers while I'm working. And yeah, I didn't add any holes for that. I just kind of put it in there. 
Uh, here what I'm doing for the toe, the toe guard, I'm just adding these areas here and so that's a bit much. So what I do is I apply this. Okay, so I apply the thickness, but I don't apply... Yeah, I apply the thickness, but I don't apply the subdivisions. So you can apply, you can basically get rid of the subdivisions and then just apply the thickness. And now all I'm doing is putting these in and then going back to dynamic subdivision by pressing D and just seeing how that, how I can kind of customize this. So yeah, quite a lot of dynamic sub, uh, subdivisions in this, so yeah. Maybe I'll do a quick like um, walkthrough on that before I do this video. I mean within this video, so you guys have an idea of what I'm doing. Here, masking this off and what I'm doing is just trying to see I don't have that pattern on here, but I figured there should be something kind of similar. So I use this pattern here. Um, it's called Houndstooth, I think. Yeah, kind of looks like a bunch of stars. And that works, but we didn't unwrap this, which is why it's stretching on the end there. So I just have to make sure to unwrap this. Again, we're using subdivisions. So all you have to do is go to lower subdivision, say work on clone, unwrap. Um, we've already done the process like a few times now, so you understand what it is. Again, make sure perspective is off. You don't want to move that while it's in perspective. And by the way, after you flatten it, you can say unflatten. There's an unflatten option. I forgot to say that. And here we go. We can just do the same thing. And yeah, it's not looking too bad. Just making sure it's a little bit small. Masking by noise. And it gets a little bit funky at the weird at the end there, but that's okay. I think I unwrapped it again just to see, but this this ended up worse. So yeah. <laughs> So the red, by the way, is saying don't unwrap those, and yeah, it, it, it was way worse, so I was like, no, that's okay, I'll undo it. And let's see if it works. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, that did work. That wasn't too bad. So basically the red is saying don't cut these areas. So it's, um, I think that's the protect, the protect option. So yeah, I did, I did redo it and it worked out, and yeah. Okay, here standard brush just adding some creases and folds okay again it is still brand new but it has a little bit of these like not artifacts but you know because of folding and stitching and um that type of stuff it does it has a little bit of character to it yeah i don't know what happened but i just went back and i just morphed i stored the morph target with those things and all i'm doing is just using the morph brush to morph that back out But yeah, because we're working on layers, we, I could do that. Here, creating another layer and using the standard brush just to add some of these folds here. Again, the fabric won't look perfect. And even though it's factory new, it's factory new, um, it won't be completely flawless, right? And yeah, we're pretty much done. All I'm doing now is just adding color to it. So that's it. So I'm just making sure to select the white. I think, I forgot which white it was. Uh, skin Tone 4, I think that's what it's called. Okay, then we're going to go to MRGB, and then we can select BPA, which is the paintbrush and ZBrush. So BPA, and there's also full object, which I'm going to use a lot of. So that's under color, and then full object. Okay, full object, here we go. Again, it's under color, and then full object, the menu on the top left. Color, full object. Make sure that you have MRGB selected on the top there. MRGB will ensure that you're coloring with the RGB, and the M stands for material. In this case, Skin Shade 4 is what I'm using. I'm creating a black material there, but it's not fully black, it's like charcoal. So don't make it pitch black. It's like um, a few levels up from black, you can see there. And then coloring these ones in gray. Again, all I'm doing is selecting the subtools and then clicking on Full Object. I'm also switching off the layers and then coloring them and switching it back on because layers can kind of affect that, so just be careful with... Um, so if it's not coloring, coloring properly, Make sure you're switching off the layers and also make sure that you have color or paint enabled. Paint is on the subtool menu, you'll see it there. So yeah, I mean again, I don't need to like walk you through all this as long as you know the color stuff in ZBrush, you should be fine. Um, again, I know I'm rushing through all this and some people might get really upset at that, but the whole idea is to give you the overview of this and then if you want like specifics, you can either check out my channel or just Google like, how do you do this, how do you do this, or how do you do that? and I think it's better to kind of find your own way as opposed to just blindly copying everything I do because you won't really be learning. That's not how you learn, by blindly copying stuff. You actually have to discover and work out on your own, right? It's like with maths. 
even though I hate maths, um, you have to kind of understand how the equation works as opposed to just blindly copying the equation, which is why whenever they give you the equation and you don't know how to use it in a test, you end up failing because sure you've done the same problem a thousand times, but you don't know how the equation actually works and how, how you get to the answer. And in this case, that's the same thing. If I'm just showing you exactly what I'm doing and you're copying me blindly, that's gonna happen. Anyway, back to brush, we press comma, we go to brush. I go to the trim border brush. Um, it's under trim, so trim, trim holes, sorry. All right, so instead of, the, instead of me rambling and pressing the comma button, I'm going to brushes and then I'm going to the trim brushes and then under trim brushes, I'm going to trim holes. And then over here, I'm just creating a new layer and then alt clicking and dragging to create a hole. Okay, um, again, you would do all of this in substance. I'm just, again, I keep saying that, but I just want you to know that you wouldn't, you would pr pretty much never do this in ZBrush in a production environment. I'm just letting you guys know what I'm doing. And yeah, just getting some of these holes on the toe here. And yeah, this is pretty much it. You can do a little bit more if you want. Go around and just check what you want to add or minus or just change around a bit. But this is pretty much it. So like it if you like it, dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section. And don't forget to check out my website and Discord. And of course, I will see you in the next one.